Hey, what's happening, guys? Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about supercapacitors, or ultracapacitors, as they're sometimes called, like this here, big cap. Which, as you can see here, holds 500 farad capacity, which is incredible. I mean, that's an incredible amount of capacity, considering that the average electrolytic capacitor is measured in terms of of micro farads which is a millionth of a farad now that one's 470 micro farads 470 millionths of a farad as compared to this one which is 500 farads a remarkable difference I mean even a large electrolytic capacitor like this one which is 15,000 micro farads pales in comparison to a super capacitor I mean even if you just even if you just took this on size alone, so that's 15,000 microfarads. You know, you doubled it so these were, you know, basically the same size, diameter, and length. You would still only be getting 30,000 microfarads out of this guy and still 500 farads out of this guy. So how are they the same? How are they different? Well, electrically in a circuit they are exactly the same thing and you can see you know physically they're basically they're constructed the same way it look like any old large electrolytic capacitor but they differ chemically there are different types of supercapacitors and I'm not exactly sure what type this one is but there are electrostatic double layer capacitors also known as EDLCs and they use carbon electrodes and they have a much higher double layer capacitance than electrochemical pseudo capacitance that you find in regular electrolytic capacitors and this allows them to uh, have a double layer interface inside that creates much higher then you also have electrochemical pseudo capacitors which is probably what this one is even though I'm not sure case the main difference you're going to find between the supercapacitor and a standard electrolytic capacitor is that the electrolyte forms an ionic conductive layer between the two conductors in a supercapacitor as opposed to there always being a dielectric present in a you know standard electrolytic capacitor now another difference you're going to find is in the amount of voltage it can take now, for instance, this is a 16-volt capacitor. This is a 25-volt capacitor, and they go much higher. I mean, clear into the hundreds of volts. But uh, the super capacitors, you are going to find, top out, the most I've ever seen is 5 volts, and this is 2.8, 2.7, 2.8. Seems to be pretty standard. They definitely have a, a lower voltage capacity based on the way they are designed and constructed. But, you know, that's a small trade-off to have for the amount of charge they, they are able to store. So what is the purpose of them? <clears throat> well, they behave just like any other capacitor, but they also tend to bridge a gap in between capacitors and rechargeable batteries. Because one of the problems you find with rechargeable batteries is a high internal resistance in the battery, and it is not able to discharge uh, very quickly. That's sometimes a good thing. Yeah, you know, something you want sometimes. Sometimes it's not something you want. For instance, this isn't a rechargeable battery, but the the the, uh, the principle is the same. You know, this is a double A battery, and it's going to have a voltage of about 1.5 volts and it is going to have that 1.5 voltage until you get down to about a 50 percent discharge and it's going to go down as low as 1.2 1.1 volts but it's going to maintain that voltage throughout the cycle of discharge now when you're talking capacitors and supercapacitors um, at a 50 percent discharge this capacitor is going to be at 1.4 volts it is going to have a linear discharge curve it's going to go but, again, that has to do with the internal resistance, and it also allows the capacitor to discharge its load almost instantaneously, which is why these are used a lot in banks for charging things such as high-power laser pumps, 
where you need a quick discharge of a lot of power. That works out fantastic. Now, where they lack behind or lag behind uh, batteries is in the amount of uh, power they can store. The uh, standard AA battery can hold somewhere around eight, eight to nine thousand joules, whereas a super capacitor, you know, you're looking at maybe fifteen hundred to three thousand joules total. But again, instant discharge, slow discharge, holds its charge through most of the cycle, linearly discharges. You know, you have to find a place to use them. And there are definitely places. So let's do a little demonstration of the difference between uh, a super cap and a standard cap. See, I have the power supply set for 2.5 volts. That is where we're going to charge both of our capacitors. Now here is the power supply wires, and we'll hook them up here. This is a 1K resistor on a red LED, which have a forward voltage of around 1.7, 1.8. And there you can see it lit quite well. So what we'll do is we will charge up this standard electrolyte capacitor is 470 microfarad at 25 volts. We're only going to charge it at 2.5 volts, which is fine. And we'll let that charge for about 10 seconds. It's not going to need 10 seconds to charge. It's going to charge in probably just barely over a second. But we're going to let it go just, just for shits and giggles, you know, to make sure that we've covered our bases, okay? So now, when I connect this, so I'm going to connect the negative here, and then I'm going to connect the positive. Watch how long, try and time how long we're going to get out of this. Ready? Here we go. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. Somewhere between 5 and 6 seconds is all it could power that battery. <clears throat> now we'll do the same thing, and we will charge up our super capacitor. And we're going to let it charge for much longer. We're going to give it a couple minutes. I'll be back when it's ready. Now, it's not quite ready yet, but what I want to show you is the power supply. Take a look at the current that it's drawing. And the current should be steadily dropping, even though it's going to take a while. So yeah, this thing is its going to take a while to charge totally. This guy's been charging for a good 20 minutes, and it's still not completely done. But it should have more than enough charge to prove my point here, which is that it will last considerably longer. There we go. You know, we're already at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You know, it's still going for quite some time. And if we take off of there, we bring it over and put it on a meter. What are we going to see? Maybe a volt and a half or so out of this guy. Yeah, 1.8. So, as you can see, the charge capacity is, you know, orders of magnitude above what you get for a standard capacitor. Which is very cool, although the charge times are considerably longer. Now, you know, when we use... Um, standard capacitors like this. You always want to discharge them when you're done, you know, like this. Like this even, you know. Do not do this with a super capacitor. Even though it's only about 3 volts, it can dump a significant amount of current out and you know, it, it could possibly overcome your skin resistance. It could hurt you, so don't short them out. Use a resistor, 1 meg resistor, Crosses should do you fine. So, all right. I hope this helps you guys out learn a little bit about supercapacitors, you know, how they're different from standard capacitors, where they fit in the world between capacitors and batteries. Like I said, you can just use them as you would any other capacitor in a circuit. They just don't take as high of a voltage, they discharge almost instantaneously, and they're capable of a great current output. 
So if you've got a need for those uh, specifics, supercapacitor might be right up your alley. All right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and I am out of here. Peace. Thank you for all your support, everyone. 2020, I'm hoping, is going to be a great year for us. Everyone who's supported through Patreon and through PayPal donations is fantastic. Um, everybody who's bought something from the Amazon store, that's what keeps this channel going. I couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, you are a part of the team. Hey, feel free to email me, arduino0169 at gmail.com. I try and get back to just about everybody.